low cadence training good or is it just an absolute myth? Well, here we go. Let's let's have a look at some old data that we've been collecting. So on my training program at the moment, I've got told to do some low cadence. Uh, so anyway, I came across this website called Why We Don't Use Strength Endurance Anymore. This is old Dr. Andy Coggan, absolute legend of a... Uh, well, anything really sport related but mainly endurance sports especially cycling they've created training breaks with old Joe Friel and has a good book about it so he's basically saying lots of people say you know you've got to do some strength endurance I you know have a bit of a training program which I managed to get um, and it says I should do it so I've been doing it as a good little lad however I have questioned it and I don't really see it as any use I've only got one like one or two left of doing strength endurance have have I felt any benefits? No, um, but I haven't really been riding as much as I used to um, for various reasons, um, so it's hard to say. But he's basically saying what you do is you have a low cadence. I'm doing like five by fives, uh, um, about tempo, high tempo, um, more like sweet spot zone, I guess you call it, um, for five minutes, and then basically you just you have a rest of five minutes, and then sometimes I'm doing a bit more. I uh, try to build up to like ten minutes of them. Um, that basically, strength, he's basically saying strength isn't that important, which is probably true, um, and that if you do want to get strong, use weightlifting. Um, like the traditional, uh, traditional thoughts about it are that you, like what stops you from cycling longer is like the build up of lactate in your legs. Uh, and if you become more powerful, then the buildup of lactate is less, and also your muscles use less power. That's why people go to the gym or whatever, because then they think that, because the maximum force that your less legs will be able to create will be larger. Therefore, when you're doing aerobic exercise, uh, then the force will be less, so you'll produce less lactate. Lactate, sorry. Uh, this is always debatable, and um, if you think about like just cadence and generally when you run a higher cadence you produce less lactate it feels nicer when you produce a lower cadence you produce obviously more lactate so it gets your legs to do like get rid of it but obviously you're hitting lower numbers so for, for instance let's say when I'm doing my tempo intervals I probably have the same lactate in my legs okay maybe a little less as when I'm doing like vo2 intervals but obviously it's less stressful on my body so for early season work if you want to get your body your legs used to getting clearing the lactate then some people say strength endurance is what you should do uh instead of doing vo2 intervals just because mentally they're a lot harder um but it's basically saying that it's not you're not doing much force i mean if you look at look at this 667 newtons and then you look when you're like walking up the stairs it's like a similar similar power when you're pushing 400 watts or whatever so it's like you don't need massive strength to do it um, and also, this is like really low, like 45 cadence, normally it's like 60 to 65 people do SE efforts on, strength and endurance. Uh, it's quite popular, like a lot of pro riders will do it, uh, like sort of before with Lockman Morton. But, I mean, a lot of that might just be because the coach said to do it, and the coach said to do it because he's seen some things, but, and it's sort of tradition. Because back in the day, yeah, you used to be a bit, need to be a bit strong. Anyway, scroll, strolling through this. Let's get to conclusions. It's it's basically saying, what does he say? More traditional forms of training for cycling are lacking. Basically, SE training doesn't increase muscle size, strength, or power um, if you're doing lots of training. So maybe if you're doing less training, it might help a bit more. But maybe if you're doing like 10 to 25 hours a week, but then a pros do it and they do like 25, 30 hour a week. So it's still just a bit odd. Uh, instead he's saying basically if you want to increase your power on the bike it's better to do standing starts or seated stomps um, which is similar to doing weights which I guess is true but then the thing is the SE people are like it's more it's like a better way of doing it because it's more applicable to your sport because obviously you don't actually go squatting when you cycle however you do like pedal so it's like you do the exact same muscles and the exact same way uh but it's questionable but i found another little article um i haven't actually seen it i haven't really read through much of it but it's basically saying the potential for it 
So strength endurance was produced for three days a week for 10 weeks. That's actually a very long time. Not many people do it that long. So maybe this is why people are a bit sceptical of this old report. Uh, and then, yeah, so leg strength was increased by an average of 30%, but I'm not sure if these people are very well trained. Well, it says they were a steady state level of performance, but normally what they do is they get them to be at least a certain VO2 max or they certain they train for a certain amount of time. So it says VO2 uptake was basically stayed the same. Short term endurance was increased by 11 13 percent. Um, and running, and then it's just saying long term cycling to exhaustion at VO2 max was increased. Mm, yeah, it's saying it doesn't really get, do any negative impacts. But it's a bit, it's a bit questionable. I, uh, it's just, the thing is, is that, yeah, it's hard to see. This is more strength training though, isn't it? So it's not really strength endurance efforts. That's the difference. It's like that was, strength endurance efforts is quite different. Um, maybe this might do it. Strength endurance Training appears to inhibit strength development when compared with strength training alone. So it's basically saying if you want to build strength, which is the other article, that you should just do strength efforts, like go to the gym, hit the gym. So you see like pros, riders like Ed Laverick, 57 kilo bloke, hits the gym, and you're like, well, what's he doing? Well, number one, he's probably a bit bored, but number two, of riding his bike, because he probably rides 25 hours a week every week um, from the beginning of January to the end of October. So he's probably just getting a bit bored um, and wants to hit the gym. Uh, but it's a bit questionable. I think it's also probably just good for your general well-being if you are cycle so much because your muscles, well, not your muscles, sorry, your bones get very weak. So is strength and endurance worth it? Not really, I'd say. There isn't much evidence to really suggest it's beneficial unless you're doing really high um, torque things, so like sprinting from a low cadence or power stomps. But I think doing strength and endurance efforts, they're not the best way you, like they're not the best thing you do for your time um going to the gym is probably better but obviously if you don't have access to the gym it's hard in my honest opinion i think unless you're very advanced uh going doing strength endurance efforts are a bit of a waste of time it's better to go to the gym uh i think the gym is like one thing which cyclists maybe slightly do underestimate the importance and how much it can help you gain fitness but for a lot of people, like, I'm not sure if the gym will help that much. Um, and most people just prefer to ride their bike. Me, for instance, I'd rather ride my bike longer than go to the gym. Uh, however, maybe if I had unlimited time, then I would go to the gym. But even then, I feel like even professionals, they don't go to the gym that often. They often go in the off-season to try and build some strength, and then they just neglect it because they just don't have the time or just can't be bothered because it will ne neglect their training. That's the reason people do it on the off season is because it won't ruin their training. Because if they have four days, like two days off, because they have sore legs or not two days off, but they just can't hit the same intensity, then it's fine. But obviously, in in a normal season, if you go hit the gym and the next day and you've got VO twos and you can't do them, then that's bad because you've decreased your performance in cycling. Yeah, you might have increased it slightly by going to the gym, but it would have been better to just have a rest day or just do an endurance ride and then the next day smash out some VO twos. That probably would increase your cycling performance far more. Than doing a strength session. So to conclude, is strength endurance, is low cadence a bit rubbish? For me, I think it is. If your coach says you should do it, I'd question the coach and be like, why? Let's see some evidence. I think that's what you should do with everything your coach says. And figure out what you really should be doing to make sure that you hit your goals next season. Alright, cheers for, cheers for watching. See ya.